there was a significantly impressive royal turnout for the Sultan's arrival, making it clear from the outset that this is rated as an important occasion. The significance is not only that Sultan Qaboos is one of the most pro-British heads of state in the world, but that he rules a country vital to Western strategy. Mind you, most of the people who brave the cold weather to watch the procession could be heard muttering, the Sultan of where? Still, the Queen knows very well since she's been to Oman, and the British government, with whom the Sultan will be having a series of talks tomorrow, is very keen on this visit. It was Britain which helped to put down a particularly nasty rebellion against the Sultan in the 70s. And his army is still run by British officers on contract, the RAF flies his helicopters, and former British bobbies lead his police force. The strategy comes in because Oman controls the narrow straits of Hormuz, through which every oil tanker must pass on its way to and from the Gulf. Indeed, it is one of the Sultan's pastimes to sit on the terrace of his palace in Muscat and count the tankers as they pass, one every 45 seconds. The man is vital, too, as a base for the Americans' rapid deployment force, and the U.S. government is to spend £800 million over the next 10 years on building facilities in Oman. Clearly, Britain can't compete with that kind of money, but the Sultan has a unique sense of gratitude and affection for us. He had his military education at Sandhurst and served as a lieutenant in the Cameronians, and, of course, wore their tartan trues. So, for all these reasons, the welcome for the Guardian of the Straits was a very cordial one indeed. Later, amidst extraordinary security, the Sultan went to Westminster Abbey to lay a wreath on the tomb of the unknown warrior, a duty which must have reminded him of his days with the British Army. Another reminder was that he then listened to an Anglican prayer in an Anglican cathedral. Tonight, there was a state banquet at Buckingham Palace, and for the occasion, the Sultan had given the Queen his special present, an insignia made of red and white gold and set with diamonds and rubies. It was, say its London makers, beyond price. Anthony Carthy, News at 10 at Buckingham Palace. Well, I